Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we build the Andy Clancy uh, Speedy Bee kit. We'll go through it step by step and take it out for a test flight. Let's get to it. So I'm going to tackle the uh, Clancy Aviation Speedy B um, RC Airplane Kit. We'll go over the kit here in a second. The um, Lazy Bee was a very popular uh, sport flyer back in the early 1990s, uh, designed and marketed by Andy Clancy. It was a high wing, kind of goofy looking airplane, fun fly airplane, but could fly very slow, short takeoff and landing, just was a lot of fun to fly. Uh, Andy made another version, the Speedy B, which was a mid wing uh, Lazy B. A little bit heavier, a little bit faster, a little bit more aerobatic, and that's what we're going to build today. So it's a 40, 40 um, inch wing, um, 40 inch wingspan aircraft. Should weigh about 40 ounces with the, with the electric motor. And this is the instruction book that came with it. It's a very complete um, instruction book, and uh, it's been around for a while. This was copyrighted back in 1996. The, the bees went out of production for a period of time. Andy has brought them back. Instead of the older die-cut laser, this has laser-cut laser cut, uh, laser cut balsa in the kit. Uh, Andy hand-cuts each kit himself. When you order it, he kits it and mails it out. Uh, he lives in Mesa, Arizona, and so it just came in the mail the other day. But it's got a good instruction manual. We'll go through that. The plans are all CAD drawn. They're fairly complicated plans. But the model itself is not super complicated, I don't think. But the plans will take a fair amount of study to go over them. And here is the pack of balsa that came with the kit. So just about everything is included, to include some music wire. There's even... Um... So, pretty substantial kit. Looks like it'll be a good flyer. I plan for electric flight on this one, and we'll get started with construction next. You order the kit from Andy Clancy Designs. This is what it looks like coming in the box. Very well packed. Everything rolled together with the plans. This is the instruction guide. Really quite helpful. And just an initial placement of where the motor will go in the model. So I've taken some time to study the Speedy B kit, the plans, and the instructions. I want to give you some thoughts to keep in mind when you build this kit or maybe another kit like this. First of all, the kit is an older kit. It was designed about 1995. It was published in the 1996 issue of um, RC Modeler magazine. This is being filmed in January of 2022. That means the kit design is, is over 27 years old. What that means for us as modelers, when the kit was originally designed, obviously it was designed for gas engines. And we sometimes forget with electric RC airplanes these days, the structure can be incredibly light because the motors are lightweight. They produce no vibrations. You can get away with my foam models and, and other lightweight models without a lot of structure. When you had the gas engine, especially slow flyers like the um, Lazy Bee, or in this case, the Speedy Bee, had the four cycle engines. The four cycle engines were, were pretty heavy and there was a lot of vibration. In addition, you had to have fuel proofing, a whole bunch of things. So what had happened was, kits like the Speedy Bee were just designed heavy. There's actually, as I went through this kit, there's basswood in there for the wing leading and trailing edges. I'm not sure you'd use basswood on a full-scale airplane, let alone a model. The other thing I did by reading through the instructions and looking at some of the forms, because of the fairly short tail moment or distance, the, the, how long the tail is, the um, plane comes out tail heavy. And so you want to do whatever you can to avoid that tail heaviness and the tail heaviness wasn't too much of an issue. We had a, a heavy gas motor. What Andy says in the directions, if you use an electric motor, because the electric motors are so white, are so light, try to keep it as far forward and things of that um, nature for the discussion. But, I, but I've got some, some things to do on that. So now that I've gone through the model and I see that basically what I'm saying is the, the model is overbuilt. There's just too much structure on it. So there's going to be places like, for example, the basswood on the leading and trailing edge. I can make that balsa. There's absolutely no problem with that. Also, some of the uh, balsa in the tail section of the airplane, there's just too much wood there. I can cut some of that out, make it thinner just to contribute to the lightness 
of the tail to keep it from being tail heavy. So other things to keep in mind, I, we're not going to take a detailed look at the plans, but for the wing, you see it's a huge wing that's part of the slow flying aspect. But he has a single aileron servo, then bell cranks that go to the ailerons. Bell cranks, we're st we've stopped using those about 1995. Uh, what we'll do, of course, is put a small uh, aileron servo for each aileron for that. That's just what we're going to do. There's also a servo in here for the throttle. You have servos for gas motors. We don't need a throttle servo for an electric-powered motor. And you can see here the basswood trailing edge spar will change that to, to balsa. So no, no big things on that, just some normal lightning. And the same for the um, side view. I've got a list of things here. I'll just go few, through a few um, items that, went th that popped in as I was looking at things. First of all, the center of gravity is here. Okay, that's the normal place, about 25% back from the wing leading edge. You can see the wing is, is this big um, on the side view. But it's a fairly short nose section right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply, and the motor ideally would go here. I have to extend the firewall through extenders or whatever to do the motor. What I'm going to do, this section right here, F1, I'm just going to make it about an inch longer. I don't think it'll look too much different, but that'll put the motor further forward. It'll help with keeping it from being tail heavy. So that will be part of the build. I think it'll blend in pretty well. The other thing that's kind of odd here is the rudder. There is no rudder. This entire tail surface is hinged here with two places. The entire unit goes back and forth. Um, you don't need that much rudder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it up along here, glue the fin to the back of the fuselage. This will be the rudder on the back. That should work out just fine for what we need. Note also we had the servos fairly aft here. We'll keep the servos for the forward. I think what will happen is as I build it, I'm going to work on the bottom to have a hatch at the bottom to access the battery and the servos. I don't need the side hatch along here. So some other things. Oh, the covering. Um, Andy Clancy, the designer of the Speedy B, made it a point to get the lightest weight covering you can get. Um, different coverings have been built over the past 27 years. I'll be using the Park Light covering that you can get at Stevens Arrow. The link is in the front. That's a very lightweight, super easy to use iron-on covering. The paint scheme I'm going to use will be a modification of a World War II um, F6F Hellcat, a popular fighter. It's kind of fun paint scheme. Just play a little bit on the, on the model. Pretend it's a World War II fighter, dark blue on the top, cream on the bottom. It's the same one I used on my Hellcat video, and I'll have a link for that in the uh, description. Oh, the other thing in the kit, they have a removable stab. Stabulators were removed back in the old days with rubber bands just for crashes and, and transport. We're, we're going to glue the stabilizer in. No need to have that remo uh, removable. I talked about the aileron bell cranks and extending the firewall. So I think I've got a pretty good idea how to build this. The instructions, uh, he keeps coming back to the instructions. They're, they're pretty good instructions. They give some good insights. They're not a detailed step-by-step -step, um, instructions like you have with Steven Zero, but it will be a good start because there are some kind of unique construction processes for this aircraft. But there's nothing that should stop us. It's a little bit um, overbuilt, a little bit over-detailed. We'll simplify where we can and get on with construction, starting with the wing and then followed by the fuselage. We're starting on the wing. The um, laser cut parts are very cleanly cut. You can see here, balsas of good quality. You just take the pieces out, lay them on the plane, and start figuring out where they go. It's just sheet balsa for the wing tips. Uh, thickness is required for the ends. Continuing with the wing build, these are a few of the uh, center ribs in place. The tips are um, tilted up for the dihedra underneath. It's a very handy guide to do that so you can do it the correct amount uh, at the ends. Note also the 1 60th inch balsa shims that have to be placed under the center ribs. This is to allow for cap strips underneath the ribs. This is a, um, another view of the wing. You can see the hatch for the pilot and the other ribs being put in place with gussets holding everything securely. Pretty much a completed wing, or you can see where the initial spars go, where the um, ailerons are. The ailerons are all kind of built into the wing section. It goes together very well with the, with the uh, laser cut parts. And here the ailerons are in place with the um, uh, lap joints of the spars, the other spars for the front of the ailerons. It all works out pretty good.
The CAD plans are well drawn, very helpful for cross-reference as you want to determine where things go. Rudy has come by to see, to view the construction of the Speedy B. Thank you, Rudy. We'll see you later. I've completed the wing. Happy with the wing. It came out pretty good. It was a little bit of work um, with the plans. Things like these cap strips, right, which I think are here for the rubber bands, uh, the, the ribs are a little bit shorter to allow for these with the spars. It gets a little bit involved. What kind of saves you is the side view of the ribs are pretty accurate with where everything goes. Even on the bottom of the wing where these cap strips are, you have to very carefully put 1 16th inch balls of shims underneath the uh, ribs to keep them the right height as you glue them to the spars. So it went together pretty well. It's a little bit heavier than I would have wanted to, but it's just a, a robust construction. I'll leave it at that. Certainly no danger of warps. And the ailerons are still built in. You can see I'll cut them away here once I'm done sanding, just about done sanding. I kept in the pilot um, platform here. Other things I did not put in were the plywood um, for the belt cranks for the ailerons because we're going to put the uh, separate ailerons in for the um, separate servos in for the ailerons on the wing. So this is the wing so far and happy with the way it came out and now on to the fuselage. So we're starting the fuselage construction now. What I always like to do is study the plans. It's a little bit different type of construction. The way the instructions work is we'll build the front hatch. Uh, this is the fuselage. The wing goes in here. Uh, this will be the, uh, where, the, where the motor goes. As I mentioned before, the problem that is always stated is it's a tail heavy model. So I've taken this nose here, I've extended out one inch. So I'll sketch this out with extra balsa. So the motor, instead of being back here, will be a little bit further forward for center of gravity purposes. I'm using these, the firewall will be located here. So I'll build this structure in. This will be removed from the wing, and I think that'll help a little bit with the forward center, forward center of gravity. So just uh, studying that, and we'll start construction of the fuselage tomorrow. This is the beginning of the um, forward uh, section of the top of the fuselage. It just fits right onto the top section of the wing. The fuselage sides are built directly over the plans. You can see the little extension I had to make the nose a little a one inch longer for center of gravity purposes. Again, nothing special with the construction here. And a view of the second fuselage side. Those will be put together here pretty soon. Very helpful for putting the fuselage together is there's a full bottom section of 1 16th inch ball. So you put that on the plan and the sides form around that quite accurately. Top sheeting on the hatch on top of the wing is being shown uh, in place. And this is uh, the wing in, um, just mounted on top of the fuselage. We can start to be building the um, firewall section where the motor will be attached. This is the beginning of the rear section of the airplane. You can see the double bulkheads there, which will be the back of the wing and the front of the uh, rear section of the fuselage the um, top stringers are in place. Note the little extension of the motor uh, shaft on the back of the motor. You have to cut a hole in the firewall for this. And here's the uh, shaping of the front of the fuselage with the top. Just make sure everything sands smooth and uh, looks good for when you take the wing on and off. I'm making good progress on the Speedy B, so let's catch up to where we are. So here is the fuselage and wing pretty much complete, okay? The only thing left really are the um, tail feathers, and we'll start on those tomorrow. So what I've done for this, and this is my first Speedy B, it's got a little bit different construction techniques. It was important to essentially tack glued the wing onto the fuselage because everything has to fit and mate together so you take it off. So on the forward section, there'll be a break right here. This is by and large separate, but I'll separate this tomorrow. So this will be attached to the wing. And then the back end of the fuselage, this double former right here, I'll cut that all the way through. So this is attached to the wing and this all just comes out and will be separate from the fuselage when it comes in. But it's necessary to keep it all in here to align everything and sand it to make sure that it, that it looks okay. But this is where we are. Um, 
happy so far. So what I do when I do a construction like this is I, I know this future actions I have to take. I just make a little notepad of what we have to do. So what I have to do is um, I'm going to have separate servos for the ailerons. I'll have to build some sort of housing into the wing to mount the aileron servo, wire extensions, get those wires back to the um, center of the wing and into the, into the fuselage. That'll be a necessary thing. I'll have to put in a servo train in the fuselage for the elevator and rudder servos. One thing that I would recommend is the rubber bands come across the top of the wing. I'll put a dowel in through this little hole um, right here, but they, they can bind into the leading edge of the wing, which is balsa. I'm just going to put some 1 16th inch balsa glue that on top just so there's a reinforcement to the leading edge and the trailing edge so it doesn't dig that up. I have to do that. And the other thing that I'm going to do is the plans had a hatch here on the side. What I'm going to do is just this whole lower portion here, I'm going to make that the re removable hatch to look at the uh, servos, battery, put in the battery between flights. That'll be fine. You won't be able to see the hatch. It'll be on the bottom. I'll make that out of thin plywood. That should be okay. And um, that's it for now. The other thing I'd like to point out, this is the motor I'm using. It's a um, Park 450 motor. It's, it's much bigger motor than needed, but Andy in the directions uh, suggested that you get a bigger motor than, than may be required just so you have the weight of it in the nose. So I had this line around the shop. I'll use this motor right here. Note that I've taken the hole out of the, or drilled a hole in the firewall because many electric motors have an extension out of the rear of the shaft itself. So that'll fit in here. I've um, done the pilot holes to, to screw in the motor. So that should go in right about there. That'll be fine. So we planned ahead for that. So overall good progress. I'm happy with the plane so far and we'll continue with um, the further details tomorrow. This is a view of the pretty much completed fuselage. You can see where the wing will go. And there's the wing there, uh, all separated, ready for final sandings. And the ailerons have been separated from here. You can then sand them to shape. So here is the wing, the front cowling, the turtle deck in place with the ailerons. And I it just tack glued it in place so it could um, correctly sand the front and the back to make sure everything lined up. And it comes off just like this. And so what will happen is dowels will be put in here and here. Uh, fairly big rubber bands will hold it on and the whole thing just fits in place like that. So it's a very simple arrangement. Flat on the fuselage. Um, nothing super complicated on that. This is the nose section. I pre-drilled the holes for the electric motor, the uh, back hole for the um, rear shaft of the motor. This whole front will be covered with, um, I'm going to use 1 16th inch balsa. I put in just a small section of it here so I could work the uh, shaping for the landing gear area. I want to keep this open so I can put in the battery trays and everything needed um, for the front. Notice I cut out some lightning holes in the back just to make um, that a little bit lighter for the concern about the model being tail heavy from the designer. Uh, tomorrow I'll make a plywood door here. This will be the hatch to get into all the servos, the batteries and all that underneath the airplane. And this will just be covered um, as it was. Be, it just, it'll just be covered. The landing gear uh, box is in place. It's plywood with 3 16 inch balls on top. The axle just fits through. Rubber bands hold it on. So it's fairly simple on that. So the fuselage is along there. The um, ailerons, in addition, I have uh, cut away, just tape holding them on. So nice big ailerons. They fit in like this. They'll hinge and they, they go like this. So that's it for the wing. And that's that. I have completed. Well, the stab is a solid piece of balsa. Again, it's going to be heavy. I'll cut some lightning holes in that. And here's the elevator with the ply a doubler here. Again, this is a pretty heavy elevator. I think I'm going to cut away some of this wood here just to save a little bit of weight. There's a lot of structure here. We don't need all that along. So really, I just have to complete the uh, rudder. I'll start doing some finishing items, and then we'll be ready to uh, install the equipment, cover it, final assembly items of that nature. Tail surfaces are pretty much complete. You see the stabilizer with the lightning holes in place, the elevator, the rudder. Note that I did make a cut with the rudder so there is a fin and a movable rudder on the final plan. And this is where the tail wheel section fits in. The uh, structure, the wings and fuselage, tail surfaces are by and large built. So now we do the plumbing, the uh, wiring. 
uh, to finish up the model. So this is the Aileron right here. They have a um, laser cut plywood control horn, which is very nice. That'll be glued in very securely after the aileron is covered, but the uh, control um, horn is on the top. And so what we do, we'll use the high-tech HS55 servos, just a pretty standard um, plywood tray here. We'll screw those in place, and then I've got to put the holes and extensions for the um, wires of the servo to plug into the receiver that'll be in the fuselage. I did a little bit of thinking about how to do the hatch for the fuselage. <clears throat> the plane needs a hatch like any electric powered plane. We have to swap out batteries between flights. What the plans have is a kind of complicated rubber band spring loaded hatch on the side here to get in the side. That's fine. What I decided to do was to put the hatch on the bottom of the fuselage. These holes I cut out from the original sheeting uh, for just lightweight. Keep it the full sheeting as you build the fuselage because this bottom um, section is very convenient for aligning the fuselage to make sure it's straight and in the correct shape as the uh, two sides come to the back. What I did was I cu cut out a section here for the hatch. If you look inside, I reinforced it with popsicle sticks along here just to give it a little bit more strength. And again, popsicle sticks are a very handy thing to have. You can buy them at a craft store. They're hardwood, but pretty easy to work sanding and cutting. And then I had a little hatch assembly here. You can see that there's two popsicle sticks on either side with one across. So you have the width of the popsicle stick inside there. So just as an example, this can, um, this can be inserted inside like that. So that's gonna hold the latch. This is the hatch that I made. It's 1 16th inch balsa. You could use plywood, but balsa is a little bit easier to work with. I'll cover this with a, a Monaco covering when I, or the park light covering when I'm done. Some reinforcement balsa cross grain on this and then popsicle sticks again to have a little hatch mechanism latch here. So what happens with the hatch with this tongue, we just put it in like that, holds it right in place. This goes over like that and the hatch is in place. So kind of out of sight. You can see everything in here. And I think that's a pretty easy way to make a removable hatch. And the other advantage of this is you don't have to worry about hinging it here, which is always a little bit trouble, troublesome over time. It just holds in place like that. Pretty much the final fuselage. You can see the fin that is put in place. The plans have an all moving uh, vertical tail surface. I decided to make a fin and a rudder. Plenty of rudder for this model, and here the tail surfaces are fitted to place. So getting close to getting ready to cover the uh, Speedy B. So this is the this is the assembly right now. Everything's pretty much in place. I've all the control surfaces are hinged. These are the ailerons, obviously. What I've done is I've glued the hinge into the um, control surface, and it's just held in place by friction. This will eventually be glued in, and you have to think ahead because what I'll do is I'll cover the aileron first, glue it in so I can put, apply the glue in here and then cover the wing. And so we'll just, we'll just go ahead and do that. So we can remove the wing pretty easily. The um, tail surfaces are done. Here's the rudder, the tail wheels in place, the elevators. This is all just friction fit. Nothing is glued in. Same for the control surfaces. So that's good. I have the installation for the servos. Again, you want those as far forward as practical for center gravity purposes, just some scrap um, uh, plywood to, to screw those in place. And the nye rods are in for the elevator and rudder. They'll come out here and I'll, I'll make those a little bit stronger later on and, and do something in here to prevent flexing. Now, the other thing I did was I took the airplane, put everything together, just held it with tape. I took a battery, put it in the nose, I taped the motor to the front just to get a feel for where the center of gravity is. It's a little bit tail heavy, but not, not that bad. Um, so what I've done, as I mentioned before, I've, I've put in the sheeting for the nose. We'll sand that up tomorrow. But if you kind of peek inside here, I made a shelf where my finger is. And what will happen is we can put the battery on that little shelf like this. So the batteries is as far, as far forward as possible. Then I can retrieve that 
from the lower hatch when I'm between flights to take out the three cell LiPo battery. The other thing I've done in the nose, you can see I built the beginnings of a little compartment here. The motor will go like this. There's room for the wires to go inside to connect. But this little tray section, I can put fishing weights in there to make weight, to make it a little bit no nose heavy. If you go to Walmart in the fishing department, it's very easy to get lead fishing weights. I'll fill that up as necessary to balance it out once we get to that point. So um, it's going together well. Um, just a little bit more work with the control servo installation. Um, I'll have to do the ailerons, uh, put the wires through for that, sand it up that I think it'll be ready to be covered. Here we can see putting in some of the NIROD control rods. The servos are the little um, mounting bars in the fuselage. Those extend out to the back. Obviously you want to do this before you cover it. Just get an idea where the electronics go. You can see the aileron servos in place and their plywood trays in the motor mount, in the uh, wing. And here's a little bit more completion. The wheels are just put in place of the fuselage. And of course the park light covering. I really like the park light covering. Speaking of covering, we're going to emulate the F6F Wildcat color scheme, and this is an initial look of that covering on the fuselage. I'll have a link in the description on how to make your decals. Just got these images off the internet. We're making good progress on the um, Speedy B. You can see that the fuselage and wing are by and large covered. Um, here's the wing right here. I just have a little bit of tape to keep the ailerons from moving, but very nice with the hinges put in place. Those uh, worked out well. Servos are done here. What I think is important when you do this wing is I covered the top first, put in the ailerons. That allowed me to add some epoxy to where the hinge sl um, slots go into here. Also, I could put in the servos, put in the wiring. This is a connector to the extension for the ailerons. And then tomorrow I will cover this with the um, cream color uh, um, park light covering. So that's, that's the, the process to do the wing. So that came out okay. The fuselage, really nothing special here, just the servos, the elevator and rudder in place, the receiver, some other things inside, and just <coughs> general covering. I'll go ahead and paint this blue um, after I put on the engine. This is the compartment for the nose weight. I'll have to add some nose weight, I'm certain. And then tomorrow I'll cover the um, rudder and elevators, put that on. We should be getting pretty close to being done with the airplane. I've completed the Speedy B. Uh, very happy with the way it turned out. Uh, here it is. Top view and the bottom view. And we'll go over a few details of what I did to finish it. The wing comes off like this. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy with the weight. I did a lot of work as I was building it, as I went through the video to try to reduce the weight, especially the tail weight. The designer was very concerned about the model coming out tail heavy. So my model uh, came in at 29 ounces, including the 2.5 ounces of nose weight, and uh, the designer had his model at 42 ounces, so it's quite a bit light, lighter than um, what, it was, what they had planned. So one nice thing about the model is you can see when you take off this very large wing, you get a very good view of everything inside the model if you have to adjust the control arms or anything like that. I built a little shelf here for the receiver and uh, items of that nature. The landing gear is held on by rubber bands and the wheel collars. Uh, this is the access door for the battery that goes up in the front as far forward as possible. Tail surfaces are all here. Uh, decals will have a link in the description how I made the decals. I just got the images off the internet and that was really pretty straightforward. Nothing, nothing special to report. I do have a E-Flight 450 motor. This is way more power than is needed for a motor like for a plane like this. They mentioned in its continuing effort to keep it from being tail heavy, you might as well put on a bigger motor because it weighs more. These motors don't really weigh that much. The weight that I had to put in eventually was uh, two and a half ounces. And I just put in one of these lead fishing weights. I had a little tray in here that I put it on that balanced it out perfectly. So I'm very happy that I only had to do it uh, 2.5 ounces. One other thing that I wanted to point out that I did on the airplane is these little popsicle sticks right located here. 
and on the trailing edge some plywood. I put those on there just so the rubber bands don't chew away at the balsa um, as you put the uh, rubber bands on there. So I think everything's okay. The plane has a nice flat wing. It balances out. Batteries are charged. So the first day we get with good weather, we'll head out to the field and take it for a test flight. So we're here at the field. Good weather, a little bit cold, but, but it'll be a good day to fly. Um, we've got the B all set up. Here it is right here. The rubber bands are in place. So the next step is to install the battery. We'll do a control check and then take it for a test flight. Okay, we've got the battery hitched up. We'll do a control check. So up the elevator, down the elevator, left rudder, right rudder, left aileron, right aileron. And we've got a little bit of throttle there. So I think we are all set to give it a test flight. This is the actual maiden flight of the um, Speedy Bee. So it took off, it's like tons of power, a little bit sensitive with the elevator, but that's okay. It just, I was very happy flying it. It's got a very positive control feel to it. It turns well with that large wing. I'm really not worried about stalling it out. The minute it gets a little bit slow, you add some power and it, it catches right up. I think I may add a little bit less elevator for future flights, but for a first flight, handled very well, uh, easy to see with its big size, and just felt comfortable um, to fly. So look forward to exploring the flight off a little more and just getting used to flying this uh, fun looking airplane. By the way, I'm guilty as charged for standing in front of the safety net. I'd like to be right behind the airplane for maiden flights to track their takeoff. All right, so we just completed. That was the, that was the maiden flight of the Speedy Bee. Very happy. It was um, responsive. The big wing is going to turn well. I could slow down a little bit, didn't want to push it too much on the first flight, and it just, it handled well, maybe a little bit less aileron um, as, I, as I figure out the controls, but the thrust, the balance, everything seemed fine, so I'm very happy with that, this airplane. Oh, the other thing is, it's quite easy to see in the sky, it's a pretty big airplane, so it shows up well. So very happy with the airplane, look forward to getting comfortable with it, learning how to fly a little bit better, and um, good luck with your Speedy V.